I turn 24 tomorrow, today, when you are watching this, and I don't know how I feel about it, not because I'm turning 24, like I'm not worried about like getting older, I just, I'm not the biggest fan of birthdays. It's not that I dislike them, I just don't enjoy them. And it's totally my own fault. I am one for putting a lot of pressure on birthdays, like it has to be a memorable birthday, or I have to do something that, you know, brings me happiness, which is fine, but then if it doesn't go according to plan, birthday ruined. Birthday's over, let's just cancel next year's birthday and I will just stay 24 forever. And birthdays bring a lot of attention. And when I was a kid, I used to love it. Like when I was a teenager, I used to love seeing my phone like flash with a million text messages saying, Happy birthday! And now that I'm older and I'm much more introverted than I used to be, I am so uncomfortable with people singing at me for a prolonged amount of time and they don't even pre-warn you. They don't even say, hey, we're gonna give you a little private concert right now. We're gonna all serenade you as a group together in three, two, one. They just surprise sing at you. What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do when people sing happy birthday to you? Because I still haven't figured it out. In 24 years, I still don't know. Singing along is one option, but I think it's a pretty bad option because then you're singing to and about yourself. Option number two, pretend you're absolutely loving it and lap it up as much as you possibly can, even though your soul is shriveling and dying inside at the prospect of having to blow out one more candle more than last year. Or there's option three, which is the option that I usually opt for, which is just standing there awkwardly, not knowing where to put your hands, so you go from crossing them to putting them in your pockets, to putting them behind you, to sort of touching your face in an awkward manner, to pushing your hair out the way back and forth and back and forth until the song is over and you can relax again. Last year was a particularly unsuccessful birthday. Let me, let me tell you a little story. Let me tell you a little story about when I turned 23. It's been a year, I can laugh now. I got overly excited about my birthday because it was my last birthday that I would be spending in Les Mis. So I thought, here I am now turning 24 and I'll be spending my day tomorrow rehearsing for Les Mis in Dubai, which is, by the way, what my next job is. Haven't said that yet. I'm gonna be in Les Mis in Dubai for a month, woo! Let's breeze over that quickly. So I was like, this is it. This is my last birthday in Les Mis and it's my last chance to do something when I've got this whole cast of friends who want to celebrate with me. Let's go salsa dancing. It sounded fun, and it was fun. It was fun for a while. So I went and had lunch with Pete at my favorite cafe, which is a place called The Doll's House. That was at like two o'clock, and then at half four I had to head in and go do a performance of Les Mis. And so, two o'clock was the last time I had eaten. And as soon as the show had finished, I was given a bottle of champagne by someone in the cast. And I was like, well, it's my birthday. Let's just crack it open. So I'm getting ready to go out and having, you know, a little glass of champagne and then my friend Paul Wilkins comes downstairs and all of a sudden, oh no, there's no more champagne left. We've had the bottle between us. So we prance outside, meet up with Pete and all of the rest of the cast and we start walking to this salsa bar and I suddenly realise that I'm already quite tipsy. And because it's my birthday, everyone's buying me drinks and stupidly I'm just like, yeah, it's my birthday, I'm just gonna drink them all. And so I drank a lot in a very short space of time. And then all of a sudden it caught up with me really, really quickly, but it caught up with me really, really quickly whilst I was on the dance floor salsa dancing with Paul again. And my head is just looking at my feet. Like I haven't looked at Paul for the whole time that we've been dancing because I'm just so concentrating on getting these steps right because we've come to a salsa bar and so god damn it I'm going to salsa to the best of my ability which wasn't very well. So I'm looking down at my feet and all of a sudden I just hear Paul yell over the music and the roar of the crowd, Carrie, you need to let me lead. And I look up at Paul and I suddenly realise that there's about eight of him. <laughs> I was not, 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 I was not well. And I was so not well that I knew immediately that I had to get to the nearest toilet as quickly as possible. But the thing about a salsa bar is that everyone dances with everyone. You don't just dance with the people you came with and people will come up to you and like sort of like go to grab your hands or sort of like gesture for you to like dance with them. Which then meant that my journey from the dance floor to the toilets went Oh no, no, I'm really sorry, I'm about, I'm gonna, oh no, no, it's very, very sweet of you, but thank you very, oh no, no, oh no, really, really, it's really, really sweet of you, but I'm definitely going to be sick right now. No, I'm sorry, um, do, you, do you want vomit on your shirt? No, then please let me go. And I only just made it. I only just made it before 
I was severely, heavily sick. So I sorted myself out and I came outside and I was like, Pete, I think we need to go home. Oh God, I just remembered that's not the end of the story. So we get in the cab and I, I'm not good in cars anyway. I get car sick really quickly. And every movement of this car is making me go <laughs> So Pete just leans over really like politely. He's like, uh, excuse me, excuse me kind driver. Excuse me, sir. Could you stop the car just for a momento, please? Thank you so much. So the really nice cab driver stops the car and I open the door and vomit again. Just on the side of the street. Cause I have all the standards and all the dignity. And the really nice driver, the gorgeous driver, he gets out of the driver's side and he walks around the car and opens the, the taxi door and he's reaching into the taxi to get me a box of tissues to make sure I'm all right and to lend a helping hand. But Pete hasn't realized that it's the driver. Pete thinks it's someone trying to steal our cab. So Pete all of a sudden just yells, Oi, that's our cab! And the driver turns around and is like, I know. I picked you up. Here, have a box of tissues. <sighs> it wasn't one of my best days in general, let alone one of my best birthdays. But hey, it's a story. It's a story. I'm a 23 year old woman, 24 tomorrow today when you're watching this so i am one whole year more allowed to drink but even so i urge you to drink responsibly unlike i did that night that was a bad night that was not fun not even a little bit did i enjoy that night and i will not be making that same mistake tomorrow tomorrow i will be having a really tame birthday i'm going to be rehearsing from 10 45 until 5 in the evening and i'm coming home and then i'm gonna go to the cinema with pete and we're gonna watch trolls there will be no shoddy salsa and no throwing up. Birthdays are weird, birthdays are weird. Or maybe I just make them weird. I think I just make them weird. Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to 